Welcome to my masterclass on cybercrime. I am Julia Davidson. I am Professor of Criminology in the Department of Law and Criminology at the University of East London. In this session, I want to focus on youth pathways into cybercrime. I want to start by telling you about some of the exciting developments in criminology and cybercrime at the University of East London. We are developing a cybercrime pathway at undergraduate level and postgraduate provision in this area. This talk is particularly relevant for students studying criminal justice, criminology and psychology, and is also relevant for prospective students undergraduate and postgraduate level. The Online Harms and Cybercrime Units is a new centre of research excellence at the University of East London. The unit is unique in its focus on human aspects of cybercrime. We focus on a broad range of issues, including online harms and victimisation, cyber psychology, cyber criminology, law and governance, financial cybercrime and cyber terrorism. Our research informs our teaching practice, but also importantly informs key areas of policy and practice in the cyber and policing areas. Our research has informed the development of child online protection policy and practice in the UK, EU, Africa and the Middle East, has shaped the understanding of various online harms, online offending and victimisation, informed EU and UK legislation and EU-wide awareness campaigns. Most recently, our research has informed the adult harms debate in the UK, informing government policy, particularly around internet regulation in the context of the online harms white paper. In this session, I want to focus on three key areas. First, what challenges are posed by cybercrime? I'm going to argue that a shift in perceptions is needed. Second, how do young people become involved in cybercrime? What pathways do they take and what are their motivations? And last, what can be done? Focusing on prevention and intervention. Stephen Hawking said, we are all now connected by the internet like neurons in a giant brain. But I would argue that we need a shift in perceptions as we have operated in the physical world for so long. Increasingly, it's the case that the online offline environment is becoming converged. NATO in 2016 recognized cyberspace as a domain of warfare, as an environment in its own right. There is a new cyber environment with social, legal, business, political structures. But these structures are built upon existing physical world structures, which may not be relevant for cyber. The challenges here remain in adapting and evolving effectively and efficiently to this new environment, asking how far the structures that we're used to in the physical world are relevant in cyber. For example, can we be sure that key legislation is international and cross-jurisdictional, and that key areas such as policing and other areas of practice can function effectively both in cyber and the physical world. The internet has certain features that enable crime. For example, we can see the internet as a distinct place where geographical boundaries do not exist in the same way removing the need for face-to-face -face interaction. The internet enables international and global communication and real-time or near real-time interaction on a scale that we would never have thought possible. Also allowing for the creation of digitally created identities. On the internet, you can be yourself, but also be someone else. The internet provides anonymity we can hide behind a screen and would say something on the internet that we perhaps wouldn't say in the physical world. When we consider current research, it's very difficult to estimate the scale of youth hacking and other illegal behaviours 
as this is a really new area of research. But what do we know? Research undertaken by the Australians through the South Australian Digital Youth Survey has focused on youth cyber risk taking and illegal behaviour. This research has been undertaken by Kayla et al. In the first stage of the research, there was a sample of 1,921 young people. The research was funded by the Australian Research Council. The findings from this research suggest that over 75% of students have engaged in at least one type of cyber risk taking. Copyright infringement related activities, this included downloading copyrighted material, for example, without permission, was the most common type of this behaviour. However, for most of the young people surveyed, cyber risk taking was episodic and reflected much less serious forms of risk taking. The Australian survey found significant overlap between cyber risk taking and physical risk taking and 29% of young people reported to having perpetrated some form of unauthorised access or hacking. Now, Kayo et al define this as accessing other people's devices or accounts without permission. I want to now outline the, the context of our research in this area. Youth pathways into cybercrime is a key research priority for us at the Online Harms and Cybercrime Unit. In 2016, the Europol Cybercrime Centre, the EC3, identified this as a key research practice priority. They would noticed an increasing number of cases involving youth hacking, where young people, sometimes as young as 13 to 14, were facing criminal records and lengthy custodial sentences. In some cases, young people face extradition to the US to face trial. They identified an urgent need for research to inform their youth awareness raising work. Our research was commissioned on this basis and the research aimed to draw together existing recent evidence on young people's online behaviour and association with criminal networks. We explore the trajectories and pathways that led young people into cyber criminality and explored their motivations. We undertook a literature review and a series of semi-structured interviews with key stakeholders working in practice with young people. You can see the publication on the slide here. The co-research leads were Professor Mary Aiken and Dr. Philip Arman. What are the research and theory challenges in this area? The first issue is applicability. The question is how far the theories that have been hypothesised, tested and validated by criminologists and psychologists in the real world, the physical world, how far are these theories still applicable in technology mediated environments? Do we need to modify or adapt existing theories or develop new ones? We argue that new theoretical explanations must be rooted very firmly in evidence based research. Looking at the findings from this study, motivations, what attracts young people to hacking? Respondents described the challenge and described hacking as a puzzle where certain skills are needed. They spoke about the importance of online reputation and building reputation scores online and also about having a sense of belonging online and achievement in the online environment, particularly in the peer network. What do we know about youth hackers from the research we've conducted? Our research and the Australian research suggests that youth hackers are predominantly adolescents and male with a high IQ and who are highly computer literate from a broad range of social classes. They can be socially isolated, but often are very heavily networked online with peer groups and with groups who share similar interests. The young people participating in our research 
demonstrated a high need for online affiliation and affirmation. So what does our research suggest are the common pathway factors for young people leading into cybercrime? First, an interest in an aptitude for technology, a willingness to first engage in low level illegal internet activity, which may unfortunately escalate through positive reinforcement from the peer network. So young people may start at a low level in terms of illegal internet activity and then may move on to much more serious risk taking and uh, illegal behaviour through their engagement with the peer network. We know that they derive an intrinsic pleasure from being part of the online network, but also they enjoy the challenges associated with hacking. The importance of online reputation with the peer network is very key in this research. The online peer network normalises and encourages illegal behaviour. Hierarchies are formed within the networks and the goal is often to move up the network from a low level to a higher level. Building reputation scores online is very important to young people. What are the recommendations from this research? We had a series of key recommendations for industry. Facilitate, support, collaborate and champion. Facilitate the development of positive legal pathways. So this, for example, could include the development of educational workshops, youth industry placements and specific mentoring programmes focusing on legal pathways. Supporting the development of general educational awareness programmes for young people, perhaps uh, in collaboration with schools and in collaboration with parents. Collaborating more effectively with law enforcement and policy makers to make sure that young people can be diverted at an early stage from this kind of illegal behaviour and also to ensure that the, the online environment where young people are most likely to encounter other hackers or to become involved in criminal activity contains key warnings about the illegality of this behaviour. We suggest that large organisations who produce online games such as Microsoft could develop cyber champion programmes. They could work with schools to do this and to introduce this for young people. These programmes should be as effective as possible in order to harness the engagement of young people at an early stage. We also made a series of recommendations around youth interventions including awareness raising, identifying young people most at risk and working with them, and the development of cyber peer mentoring programmes. Awareness raising at a general level could inform all young people and parents, perhaps through programmes delivered in schools. Identifying young people most at risk and working with them to raise awareness about the possible consequences of illegal online behaviour would provide one form of prevention. Cyber peer mentoring programmes could be developed and delivered by young people who've been hackers and who have been the most at risk. In summary, young people can become involved in cybercrime without realising or fully understanding the possible serious consequences. This is a very new and emergent area of criminology and psychology. Areas becoming known as cyber criminology and cyber psychology. This is a developing theoretical context. We must think about, however, the applicability of traditional theory in the context of the new digital. The sentences that young people receive are frequently harsh and can be custodial. And there's a lot of work to be done around awareness raising so that young people are fully aware of the possible consequences. Emerging research suggests that boys aged between 13 and 17 are most likely to be involved in hacking. 
and they can be a pathway from gaming into illegal hacking. Young people can be groomed and recruited by organised criminal, criminal gangs into hacking and money laundering and prevention and awareness raising work with young people needs to be undertaken in order to make them aware of the possible risks. This research will be continued in the context of a large EU study across eight countries that explores young people's illegal online behaviour. This research has just started and will continue over the next three years. Thanks for listening to my talk. I hope you've enjoyed my first masterclass.